Hey YouTube, Drone Tech here. Well, we are through the first day of public testimony from Trump's former lawyer and convicted liar, Michael Cohen. And it has been every bit of the circus we all thought it would be. There's a ton of information to comb through here, but I just wanted to hit on a few points that really stood out to me. Right off the bat, Michael Collins using every DNC media talking point that we've heard for the last couple of years, calling Trump a con man and a racist, and using such evidence as, quote, he called third world countries shitholes. Of course, he doesn't have a shred of actual evidence to prove how racist Trump is, just the same tired tropes from the media. Never in a million years did I imagine when I accepted a job in 2007 to work for Donald Trump that he would one day run for the presidency to launch a campaign on a platform of hate and intolerance. Donald Trump is a man who ran for office to make his brand great, not to make our country great. He had no desire or intention to lead this nation, only to market himself and to build his wealth and power. Mr. Trump would often say this campaign was going to be the greatest infomercial in political history. Cohen makes the claim that Trump was only running to build his brand and would constantly refer to it as the greatest infomercial in American history. He goes on to say that Trump never really wanted to win and didn't think he was going to win. This is just not believable. Trump was running harder than any other candidate out there. If you remember correctly, Hillary was skipping states while Trump was hitting up states at the very last minute for gigantic rallies. It's very clear that Trump was working very hard to win that campaign, so it's just not believable that he was only doing it as a way to build up his brand. And then, of course, later, he's claiming that Trump would do anything to win the presidency, so there's some pretty major contradictions there. I'd really like to know, if Trump hates black people so much and brown people, why is it that black and brown people are doing better in this country than they ever have in the past? And I know I said this a couple times now, but isn't it amazing how Cohen's words mirror exactly what Democrats and the media have been saying? He knows that all he has to do is just repeat all the things that they've been drilling into people's heads, and they're going to be on his side. And I'll ask the same question I've asked hundreds of left-wingers over the last few years, and I never get a response to. What has Trump done to black people? Which policies can you point to and tell me those are anti-black or those are anti-brown? There are none. It's a complete mirage. Surely, if Trump is the Hitler-esque hate monger that the media and Cohen claims he is, there's got to be some sort of evidence or policy that you can point to and say, this is anti-black. Nope, black unemployment is the lowest it's ever been. And despite the media narrative, hate crimes are so rare that people actually have to fake them. I also find it really hard to believe that a racist would work so hard to help black corporations improve their communities to the point where Jesse Jackson offered up such glowing praise to Trump saying, we need your building skills, your gusto, and your desire for people on Wall Street to represent diversity. We thank you for coming tonight. Let's give Donald Trump a big hand. Racists don't work to improve the lives of African Americans. Mr. Cohen, how, how, long did you, uh, how long did you work in the White House? I never worked in the White House. That's the point, isn't it, Mr. Cohen? No, sir. Yes, it is. No, it's not, sir. You wanted to work in the White House. No, sir. You didn't get brought to the dance. Sir. And now? I was extremely proud to be personal attorney to the President of the United States of America. I did not want to go to the White House. This is probably Cohen's signature lie today, and you're probably going to see it talked about quite a bit, at least on Fox. It has been well established at this point that Michael Cohen desperately wanted a job at the White House and was very angry that it never materialized. Arthur Schwartz, who is a GOP consultant who works with Trump Jr., said on Twitter, he complained to me on numerous occasions about the fact that Trump didn't offer him a job at the White House. He was running around telling people that he was going to be chief of staff because he earned the job. Even CNN couldn't deny that this was a huge whopper of a lie. And the one potential problem that I thought Michael Cohen has is when he was asked if he wanted a job in the White House and he said no. Our reporting, I know Pam, you've been told, I've yeah. been told, all of us uh, by people in and around the process, real time. He very much, he very much wanted right. a job in the White House, yeah. very much. And I and I think the issue there is that one sentence, mm -hmm. I did not want to go yeah. to the White House, uh, all of our reporting right. suggests that's not true. And Even the Daily Beast, a left-wing publication, reported that Cohen was telling everyone around him that he wanted a White House job. 
I think that this point is actually really important because it gives Cohen a motivation to want to destroy Trump. You see, he's already convicted of lying in other crimes and is going to go to prison. So he obviously resents Trump, and I can see that he might want to take him down with him. There's an old saying that the best lies have an element of truth to them, and I think we're seeing that when Cohen admits that he has no evidence of Russian collusion. The media is now taking that quote and saying that, oh, if Cohen wanted to, he could lie about this, but the fact that he's admitting he has no evidence proves that he's credible. He then went on to say that he has his suspicions that Trump did collude with Russia, and he then uses the media spin of the Trump Tower meetings as his reasoning for that. Questions have been raised about whether I know of direct evidence that Mr. Trump or his campaign colluded with Russia. I do not. And I want to be clear, but I have my suspicions. Sometime in the summer of 2017, I read all over the media that there had been a meeting in Trump Tower in June of 2016 involving Don Jr. and others from the campaign with Russians. Nothing Cohen just said there is new, and in fact, it's missing a lot of context and other information that the media hasn't exactly been very forthcoming in reporting. For example, we know the meeting was about adoption in Russia. They may have used the pretext of dirt on Hillary, but none of that ever came up. And I'm sorry, but so what if you went to go get dirt on Hillary? Are you telling me that the Hillary campaign wasn't working to get dirt on Trump? Is getting opposition research on your opponent against the law? This is yet another example where it looks like the media and the Democrats are working together to criminalize their political opposition. We already have a great example of that in the 2018 midterm elections for the Democrats. I predicted back when they first started the whole Russian collusion narrative that anytime Democrats won an election, there was no Russian meddling. But as long as Republicans win an election, they will always, from here on out, always try and sully that uh, victory by claiming that it was influenced or meddled with by Russia. When the Democrats did good in 2018, there was press releases all over the place declaring no Russian meddling. Another detail that curiously was left out of Cohen's testimony was the fact that several people at that Trump Tower meeting were from Fusion GPS. And of course, we know that Fusion GPS was the company that put together the now infamous Trump dossier. The Trump dossier was opposition research by the Hillary campaign put together by foreign intelligence agencies. Hmm, that sounds a lot like what they're accusing Trump of, but have no evidence to support. It's pretty disgusting that this is all going on and the media is going after Trump right now while he's over in Vietnam trying to secure a peace deal with North Korea. I can't imagine that if the shoe was on the other foot and it was the Democrats being hounded by the Republicans that the media would be playing along like this. I have no doubt that the media would be doing all that they could to torpedo the Republicans, just like they did in every investigation of Hillary. My prediction is... Absolutely nothing comes of this Cohen testimony. It's clear that he's got no evidence of anything illegal or it would have come out already. The only purpose of these hearings is to give the media and Democrats another weapon to flog Trump with before the 2020 elections. If Trump actually broke the law, then he should be punished. But I've seen zero evidence so far that he's broken any laws. And that's pretty telling because in the two years that he, since he became president, it's been nonstop, almost 100% negative coverage of the president. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like my content and you agree with my message, please consider subscribing to me on Subscribestar or Patreon. You can also donate to me on PayPal. You can find the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you.